Russia will likely keep North Korean soldiers on the second line of defense in the Kursk and Belgorod regions in order to free up its own troops for fighting in Donbass, Ukrainian fighters who are fighting in the Kursk and Kharkiv regions told the Washington Post. According to U.S. intelligence, there are currently about 10,000 North Korean soldiers in the Kursk region. It is believed that the Kremlin wants to use them to reinforce Russian troops that are trying to drive the Ukrainian armed forces out of the area around Sudza. Yuri Fedorenko, commander of the Achilles Battalion, which is fighting as part of the 92nd Separate Assault Brigade in the Kharkov region, said that intelligence data recorded the presence of North Korean troops not only in the Kursk region, but also in the neighboring Belgorod region. According to Fedorenko, North Korean troops will be used to strengthen the second line of Russian defense near Belgorod. This will free up the Russian units stationed there, and they can be sent to Donbass. Valentin Levada, 36, a fighter in the unmanned systems unit of the 82nd Brigade, expects that Ukrainian soldiers will soon meet the Koreans in direct combat. We could face the North Koreans directly if there is a quick breakthrough. I suspect it will be difficult to capture them, he said. Ukrainian armed forces holding territory in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation are prepared for a possible confrontation with North Korean soldiers and are not particularly concerned about the level of this threat. As one of the soldiers, Vitaly Ovcharenko, told The Guardian, he is already learning Korean. I learned a few phrases. These were, put your hands up, drop your weapon and walk slowly towards us. And also, take off your bulletproof vest and helmet, he said. It was reported that North Korean soldiers were already fighting near Sudza and had clashed with Ukrainian troops. What their impact on the battlefield will be is still unclear, but Ukrainian soldiers do not seem to be worried, The Guardian notes. We don't know how Moscow will train them or communicate with them. They could be fanatical professionals with totalitarian souls or inexperienced guys from another continent. In any case, we are prepared for the threat. They will simply die uselessly, Ovcharenko says. According to The Guardian, Ukrainian servicemen in Russia joke that whoever captures the first North Korean prisoner of war will be rewarded with a case of champagne. In fact, we will hand over the North Koreans to the competent authorities, says Ovcharenko. Ovcharenko said he did not think Russians in Sudza would have sheltered wounded foreign soldiers. There is incredible racism here. It shocks me, he said. In his opinion, the Kursk raid was a success, despite the unwanted arrival of four North Korean brigades and the initial clashes. We have achieved more than we wanted or expected. In war, not everything is so simple, but overall, we are positive, he said. A woman was taken to the hospital after getting caught between the crossfires of an apparent road rage shooting incident near a Philadelphia college. Footage shows what appears to be a firearm on the street as police rope off the crime scene. According to local reporting, two drivers were shooting at each other near Temple University, and that law enforcement apprehended the suspects. The police said the woman was in one of the suspect's passenger seats when the incident happened. Locals in the Cagayan province of the Philippines were recovering after Typhoon Inching battered the northern Philippines with floods and landslides before blowing away from the country on Friday. 
The typhoon left two airports damaged and aggravated a calamity caused by back-to-back -back storms hitting in recent weeks. There were no immediate reports of casualties from Inching, the 13th major storm to hit the disaster-prone Southeast Asian archipelago this year. The typhoon, locally called Mars, was last tracked over the South China Sea about 100 kilometers west of the northern Philippine province of Ilocos Norte with sustained winds of up to 150 kilometers per hour and gusts of up to 205 kilometers per hour, according to government forecasters. It is expected to weaken further before hitting Vietnam. The typhoon flooded villages, toppled trees and electricity poles, and damaged houses and buildings in Cagayan province, where Inching made landfall Thursday afternoon, provincial officials said. More than 40,000 villagers were evacuated to safer ground in the province. The new damage will complicate recovery efforts from two powerful storms that lashed the northern region in recent weeks. Tropical storm Trami and Typhoon Kongray left at least 151 people dead in the Philippines and affected nearly 9 million others, mostly in the northern and central provinces. More than 14 billion pesos in rice, corn and other crops and infrastructure were damaged. In the hardest-hit province of Batangas, south of Manila, at least 61 people died in floods and landslides. More than 630,000 people were still displaced due to Trami and Kongray as of Thursday, officials said, including 172,000 who remained in emergency shelters as Inching blew across the country's mountainous north. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. decided not to attend the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in Peru next week to focus on recovery efforts, Communications Secretary Cesar Chavez said.